Earlier today, Ghostbusters Afterlife lead designer Jordan and community manager of Ilphonic, Aaron, took to Twitch for a live stream presentation. And while we certainly recommend you checking out that entire live stream, we got a link to it down below in the description, I thought that we would provide a bit of a recap going over some of the key points. Now it was stressed that all the gameplay here was from a much earlier build, with the stream beginning within the game's main hub, the Ghostbusters Firehouse. Members of Ilphonic's QA team, they were also part of the stream, showing off some of the additional character customization, which from what we can see here, does look like it's going to offer quite a few options. And speaking of customization, it was confirmed that the locker is seen on the first floor of the firehouse. That's where you're going to be able to change and customize the appearance of your Ghostbuster in training, with Jordan saying that they put a lot of time into this feature. Also on the first floor, we did see this prompt for side hustles, which is said to be classic challenges. Players also spotted their very first new NPC character named Cat. No idea how she fits into the story or this game, but I gotta say, I'm digging the look. We were also given a much better look at the basement. And the downstairs, I mean, this looks great. But at the same time, during the stream, they then headed upstairs. And we got to see the second floor for the first time which in my humble opinion is incredible. I mean, it looks so similar to the 2009 video game and of course the 1984 film, because I mean, they were based on the same source material, but Ilphonic, they have made it their own, including the addition of this lab, with another NPC character being seen named Eddie. And this room here is where you're gonna be able to upgrade your gear, which is gonna include the particle thrower, proton pack, PKE meter, and the ghost trap. Oh, it was also mentioned that as you're busting ghosts, you're going to be able to collect spores, molds, and fungus. And for those asking, yes, you can totally go down the fire pole in first person. Right outside the firehouse, you're going to find a firing range, and this is where you can try out all your new gear and upgrades. On the other side of the alley, you're going to see Ray's Occult Bookstore. And this location is said to be very narrative-based, including a collection area based around the game's five unique maps. You're also going to be able to access the Ghost Realm or the Ghost Hub from Tobin's Spirit Guide, seen here on the counter. And Ilphonic, they're planning to show off this Ghost Realm in an upcoming live stream, so stay tuned. The majority of this stream, however, did take place inside the museum map. Once again, character customization is on full display. I mean, just look at that chin. Much like the 2009 game, you can destroy your surroundings with the Proton Stream. Oh, as well, notice that little property damage meter on the bottom left-hand side of the screen. As ghosts haunt an area, you're going to see the room slowly begin to change in appearance, soon evolving to having slime oozing from the walls and splattered across the floor. When stuff like this begins to happen, nearby civilians, they're going to freak out, and it's going to be your job to calm them down. Keeping with civilians, they'll also become scared when they have direct contact with a ghost, or if they get a little too close to a nearby proton stream. You just scared him, Aaron. I just calmed that yes. guy. Once a civilian enters a horrified state, they're going to flee for the exit. And in doing so, they may even knock a Ghostbuster down. Now, one thing we really haven't talked about just yet is the ghosts. And seen here, a ghost can animate an object, including this uh, floppy starfish. The PK meter works exactly how you think it would. The closer you get to a ghost, the wings, they're going to raise. The lights and the sounds, they're going to go faster. However, one change here is the yellow, red, and green lights, which is going to tell you if a ghost is higher, lower, or on your plane. Really love that addition. Nice touch. Ilphonic also showed off ghosts being able to haunt objects. And in doing so, this is going to give off false signals on the PK meter. Around, they're giving off a signal. And it, it, it's basically mimicking what the, what the ghost is um, to kind of throw you off. Uh, Ghosts are also going to be able to use rifts, which are kind of like respawn points. Like when the ghost is being sucked into the ghost trap, they can just respawn at a rift. So it's going to be pretty important for a Ghostbuster to destroy these. Now this is easier said than done, as ghosts are going to be able to move the rifts, even hiding them. Now one really small yet cool feature I need to touch on is during the stream they talked about the ghost trap. And to activate the ghost trap, you're going to actually have to step on the foot pedal. Once again, such a small feature, but I love that Ilphonic included that. And while we're talking about gadgets, there is a new gadget. A grappling hook. Yes, an Ecto Ghostbuster grappling hook. This is going to ensure that you're going to be able to get to a higher floor as quickly as possible. So you don't always feel like you need to take the stairs. Keeping the gameplay fast and furious. And speaking of gear and gadgets, we got a tease of the gear cart, which is going to allow you to further customize your Ghostbuster by swapping gadgets and even repair damaged equipment. And we've already talked about it before, but let's get back to the PKE meter. 
as it has another feature called the PK meter blast. Now think of it kind of like the shocker from Ghostbusters Afterlife, you know where you can actually shock a ghost, as the PK meter blast can stun nearby enemies. Now one part of the stream that I loved is the confirmation that there is no permadeath. If you're slimed as a Ghostbuster, you can eventually clean yourself off or get faster help from a fellow team member. As someone who really enjoyed Ilphonic's Friday the 13th video game, I loved playing as a camp counselor, but I hated after I died, all I could do is just sit and watch the rest of the game. The fact that I'm not gonna have to do that in Ghostbusters Spirits Unleashed makes me so happy. And speaking of being happy, it's gonna be important to make sure your Ghostbuster is happy, i.e. not frightened, because much like civilians, they can become horrified. So it's gonna be important to stay close with your teammates. That way you don't get too scared. And if you do get too scared, the ghost, it's gonna be able to see where you are easier, and you're also not gonna be able to calm down civilians. Which it should be stated that civilians getting scared, that increases the haunted level of the map, which is gonna help the ghost win. You see, for a ghost to win, they're gonna need to have this haunt level up to 100%, and then survive a final countdown. For the Ghostbusters to win, it's pretty self-explanatory. They're gonna need to destroy all three rifts, and then capture the ghost before time runs out. Now, that's pretty much all the key points from this live stream. In addition to this, they did play a full game just for fun, which I recommend you checking out. Once again, a link to it is down below in the description. And of course, if you'd like to pre-order your copy of Ghostbusters Spirits Unleashed, we have all the pre-order links, both physical and digital, down below in the description. That's all I've got for you here right now. As always, be sure to subscribe to Ghostbusters News here on YouTube. Bust that bell notification icon to stay up to date with everything that's happening within the Ghostbusters world. If you'd like to join up with Ghostbusters News, check out our Patreon page. We have a link to that down below in the description, and I'll see you right back here next time.